Hi everyone and welcome to Rage Print. I'm Andy and this is episode 21, 21 episodes of my chopper build. And in this episode we're going to paint the legs, the last bits. Uh, so first of all I need to stick the live action greebies on and then we can just follow the same process of priming, sanding, painting, worrying about layer lines and join lines and then ultimately not worrying about them. <laughs> I'm sure it won't go like that. So why don't you join me and see how we get on. Oh, it's cooled down considerably now, so I'm hoping that it should be a bit easier to paint. Uh, as much as the heat was a help to get the paint to dry quickly, it was too quickly. It's a nice, normal temperature now. See how we get on. Hope I'm just hoping the rain holds off. Hopefully. Okie dokie then. So these are the legs as they stand at the moment. Um, we have a huge pile of greebies here that needs sticking on. Uh, so I think I've learned my lesson from doing the body and anything that is a greebly that's going to be the same colour as the leg, I'm going to stick on now. Regardless of sanding, I'm just going to stick it on now, make, it, make my job a bit easier. Um, so I'm going to take the feet off the legs and that's just done by taking this out. And I don't know how we're going to see that. There's a pin there. Don't worry, there's a pin there, and just knock the pin out, and then the leg will come out. Um, I have to disconnect the uh, the motors from the other side. Luckily, I thought about that, and there's a disconnect there. Um, the other thing I need to do is you know take these bits out because they're all removable, so I can paint them separately. I won't be able to paint those separately. So they'll just get painted carefully along with the rest of the leg. Um, the other thing I'm lucky with is the live action version. The legs are pretty much all one colour. There's very little colour difference now. Um, whereas before, like this bit was green and then I think that bit was yellow and then this bit's grey and then these are silver. It's all pretty much a uniform colour now. Um, so while you might argue it makes it a little more boring, it's actually quick, can, can be quicker for me to paint because I can just paint it all one colour. Um, what else while I'm thinking about it? So I've shown you some of the Greeblies before. Like um, This is a prototype. I think I might do it again. Um, Terry printed some decent inserts that can go in there. So I might rip the magnets out and put the inserts in. And then the idea being that goes on there. And then that's assured, supposed to go around like that. Um, it's quite self out of position, so I'll, I'll probably just do a new cable, It'll just be easier, a bit longer. Um, got plenty of it left, uh, don't need that much of the proton pack. Um, yeah, I think that's all ready to talk about. I mean, in some cases, I don't, I'm not going to have to do a lot of filling and gap, gap filling, so like all this, I don't have to now because for the most part. This new live action Greebly covers a lot of it. So, um, yeah, I don't need to do anything with it. Just obviously tidy up the edges of this, and then um, job's a good one. I mean, obviously, there's these bits here, but it cuts my workload down considerably. Um, and then, likewise, on the feet, uh, right, no, that's the wrong one. On the feet, that goes on there, and again, that covers up a large percentage of um, gap uh, uh, join lines so I'm happy with that and same uh, I think it's this one there we go that's just covered up, it covered up a join line um, so yeah I'm, I'm just going to save me a bit of time but funny feeling that's on the wrong way around isn't it no it is right the leg, the leg just needs to tilt back the other way um, yeah so I think that's enough talking um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick all the pieces on, so like these bits are going to get stuck on. And like there's a greaver that goes on here, I'll, I'll stick it on, stick that on as well. Um, and then I'll show you how I've got on, and then it'll be a case of removing these bits, because remember they're going to be painted a different colour, removing those bits. Just leaving with the greeblies that are supposed to be attached to the main leg itself and the main foot, and then we'll work from there. 
that was a long way of me saying I'm going to stick some stuff onto the onto the plastic and then paint it. Okay, I've been at this for about an hour and a quarter, and I'm getting there. I'm nearly done on this leg. Um, I just got these bits left to go, so the two these clips um, go like one's there and one's there. So they need to go on, and then this bit sort of goes on the back there, painted black. Um, when I did this bit, um, it's supposed to have that bit on as well um honestly i was never happy with this bit here it it, it didn't look like as it as it does on the photo so, so when i glued that bit on i thought actually i like the look of that better so it's not going to be cat it's not going to be accurate i mean let's face it any of the mods i've made to chopper so far are not strictly 100 percent accurate if you want that you need to, you're gonna have to do michael badley's version two um but I, I like that. That looks better, I think, as a as a, as a hydraulic strut. It kind of it matches kind of this style here, doesn't it? Almost. Um, so anyway, I've got the other bits on. Um, see here, I've got around there and around there. Uh, I haven't put the battery box bits on, and by that I mean, uh, hang on, I've got a big pile of pieces here. By that I mean like uh, this bit. And this bit, and there's some little bits here. There's like four of those. Um, now these are Terry's bits, and they look great. Don't get me wrong. I just think these be a bit chunkier, as in thicker. Um, looking at the photo, the profile of that is like double the thickness. Yeah, you know, they're quite chunky. So I might ask Terry for the um, fusion file, and I'll just double the size of it. Because uh, I've got his STLs, and he's likewise, he's got my STLs. Um, between us, we're sort of deciding which ones we like the best. Um, but he's done, he's done all his. Yeah, I might ask him for the, the fusion so I can expand those before I glue them on. Uh, the only other thing that needs to get glued onto the leg is there's like a strut here. Uh, I'll just grab that, it goes there, it's got like some clips on the side. Uh, because that'd be a pain to paint, I'm gonna, I am actually gonna stick that on later. And so yeah, apart from the two, apart from the these three pieces here and those battery pieces there, I think that leg's done. There's so many extra greeblies that get added on, and plus I've got a whole pile of, of iterations that I've accidentally, or rather, I haven't pulled out of the bits pile. So I'm trying to work out which bits were the bits I actually wanted. Um, but. I like that. If I zoom out a bit. I like that. If we compare it to like the plain old leg, it's, it's busy. Don't get me wrong. That is that is a busy leg. There's a lot going on there. Um, but it feels right in a way. It's, maybe it's a bit too much. Yeah, it, it kind of almost. If I was if I was designing Chopper, the live action version, and I was told to put more greeblies on it. I would go halfway between. I would take some of this off, and I mean, you look at R 2s leg. Um, body out of the way. You know, th there's bits on there, but it's not overly busy. I can see what they've tried to do. They tried to copy this bit, and and sort of down there. That's what they tried to do. Um, but I think they've gone a bit too far. Really. Um, it will look better once it's all one colour. It will sort of blend in, but it's busy. It is very busy. That's too plain, I think. That's too busy. Halfway in between would have been perfect. But that's enough of my rambling. I'm going to leave it for tonight because it's getting late. Right, that's the last of the pieces to go on. So two little clips and that bit. Um, I'm still not sure what to do about the battery box. <laughs> So, Mike has just released the battery box pieces for the real version 2 chopper, so I'm tempted to use those. The problem is, that doesn't look big enough. That should be bigger, chunkier. So I'm half tempted 
to print the to print Michael's ones and stick them on there. But I'll think about that one. I've got to do the other leg, and then uh, and then we'll see. Yeah. But on to the other leg. Right. So I stuck all these pieces on. So got that bit, those bits, and then those bits on there and the bits on the greebly which incidentally that bit is orange i thought it was all one color but it's orange uh so the only bits i haven't put on are again i haven't put the battery box bits on and there's a medallion that goes there i have it here um now while i quite like mine there is a better version that's just been released so i'm going to print that one out along with the battery pieces and that'll get plugged onto there. Um, something I have noticed while I've been doing this is that if I just take this bit off, um, the axle is coming out. It's slipping. Now, considering I to hammer the damn thing in, that's kind of worrying that it's slipping back and forth in between the two bearings. Uh, so I think I might print a cap that goes over it. Um, just sort of Sort of, even if it's just halfway across, just to sort of hold it in place so it can't move either way. Um, I'll have a look at that. Um, but yeah, apart, say apart from the battery box pieces, which I'm going to reprint, and the medallion, which I'm also going to reprint, that one is done. So that's both legs are done. So now they just need um, puttying, as in gap filling. And then we can do the usual spray putty, sand, paint, curse, paint, sand, etc. Right, so I've printed Mike's uh, battery box parts. Um, so bear in mind these are designed for a smaller battery box. I think it's actually to about, so effectively that bit's chopped off. Um, but I think that looks the part. So this one's glued on and it's a lot chunkier, it has that kind of chunky feeling. Um, so I still want to glue this one down, as you can see it just sort of pieces like that, and then these bits, kind of, there's like a slot there, they kind of slot in there, and that gives you the height you need, because there's a straight bit and then the curve, so you know you've got it at the right height, and you've got it more or less level. Um, I've also printed the medallion, um, it's a lot smaller than the one I did, but it's a lot more detailed, and that would go on. If I get the right leg. That will go there-ish. So I'll do that in a minute. Um, I'm going to glue those bits on first and let it dry, and um, I can have a look at doing some putty. Probably won't be tonight at this rate, but um, we'll see how we go. So I was just about to glue that bit on and I was checking my reference photos to make sure I get this in the right place so instead it kind of goes on that sort of angle. And as I was looking at the photo I realised that this is wrong. That bit should be there which means I've put them on the wrong feet. And there's nothing I can do about that now that's welded on as in because that's what the stuff does. Um, mm. Oh well, that's just one of those quirks, isn't it? So anyway, I'm going to stick that on now, the right way round. There we are, stuck on. So now it's time for gap filling with putty, which is a big, big job on two legs, but it's got to be done. I swear that's a layer shift there, isn't it? Uh, Okay, I forgot about that. All right, we'll work into that. Right, that's the first leg pulled apart, so I can start uh, sand, uh, putting and sanding stuff. Um, this is how they're going to be painted. So the, all these separate parts will be painted individually, and um, then we'll put them back together. Hope you've got just got to be careful of like lines here and in here where things go back in, 
uh, also there as well where the the new cable goes which I'll talk about later on um, so yeah so now it's just time for gap filling uh, instantly I lost another nut and washer and I worked out where they're coming from it's those ones up in there um, I'm not too worried about them they appear to be moving so I think it should be okay um, I might try and put them back in afterwards but they'll probably just whip themselves loose again so yeah just got to take the other leg apart now and that's the other one so um, yeah time to start filling gaps um, I won't be filling these gaps here for the simple reason that's the dropout of the drive if I only set the drive out this needs to be able to separate um, other than that yeah it's filling gaps it's not quite as bad as I feared right those are all gap filled I think I might need to give it another pass on some other places in some of the places but um, yeah I've just got to let that all dry now and then like, sand anything the grey bits need sanding and then um, yeah I think we start puttying yeah the spray putty and painting it's taken me about three evenings about an hour and a half each evening so yeah slow me down a bit right so i've been sanding away um both with just the sanding pads as normal and with, like with the dremel and a palm sander so that's now smooth and then these divots i'm just going to make look like um weathering so like just a ding of metal underneath um i've gone out with the palm sander here and that's now flatter than it was um there was like a raised bit here and then there's like a layer skip here so that's been flattened out and the same on top of there there's a little bit of a raise still but it's about as far as i can take it without starting to go into the infill um incidentally this is why you're told to have so many layers there's uh, so many walls as well as strength gives you a bit of a leeway in, in sanding um this i'm not too worried about because you know that's smooth anyway but it's going to be the foot is going to be not well, the foot's going to be going that way, that angle isn't it but you know it'd be dark and painted so you, you hardly see it and um yeah so instead if you're wondering how you use a palm sander and dremel on 3d printed plastic the answer is carefully um are they saying that i was really going at it with that i wasn't stopping to let the plastic cool down it wasn't um it wasn't bobbling like it would I and mean, I guess that's the difference of PLA and PLA plus that's that's all PLA plus um, the only thing I am worried about is that I didn't fill these holes here I'm hoping the spray putty will cover it I suppose I could put the normal putty down now let it dry because I'm not going to spray until tomorrow I don't know I'll check I'll see okie dokie that is sprayed. Um, I haven't done the undersides of the legs yet because I'm still letting this dry. Um, and they're done apart from the undersides of the battery boxes and the undersides of the, the feet, which I probably won't do with spray putty to be honest. Um, that was about four cans of spray putty. I've got one and a half cans left, so um, to be fair it's only got to do the underside of the legs and possibly another light coat, oh damn it, uh, possibly another light coat on top, um, as you can see I won't be picking those up anytime soon, and I'm probably going to have to sand back to get to the magnets. They should still be fairly magnetic anyway. I try to avoid spraying in there and in here and the same there um, just to minimise the amount of spraying I'll have to do later. And it's dry just a bit. Yeah, I am going on quite thick. And that's mainly just because I haven't got a lot of time to spray. I'm probably using more spray than I would normally. 
Right, so I've just started sanding and I've set myself a bit of production line. So every time I finish sanding a piece, I'm immediately priming it so that I can assume it's all right. Uh, so I can just carry on, you know, right, I know they're dry and I can just get on with the next bit rather than trying to prime all in one go and trying to save myself a bit of time. Uh, it's now Tuesday. I have just over a week and a half because it's next Friday as Joy Builders. I've got a week and a half to get the legs painted and everything back together. And I still want to make a slip ring adapter, mag tag adapter. So, um, yeah, a lot to do, not a lot of time, and I've got other things to do as well before we go. So I'm just going to plod on. Right, I've done all of the greeblies, um, apart from the little side poles, I just realised I haven't even sanded, uh, primed those or sanded those yet. Done the main greeblies. Um, and it started spitting with rain, which is really annoying because this is one of my only evenings to get things done. And I'm rushing. And yeah, I, I can still see those print lines there. Uh, part of it's down to the fact I've actually run out of spray putty, but get any more till tomorrow. Um, part of it's down to the fact I am running out of time and I'm cutting corners. I mean, are you really going to notice that? Probably not, but professional pride. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think I'm up on the clock now. I've probably got about five minutes before the heavens open. So I'm probably going to have to stop here, which is annoying. But anyway, they're done. They're primed. May have another look at that. Um, and it's the actual feet and legs left now, and the battery boxes. See how far I get before it opens and rate with the rain. Right, I've given these a shot of the base coats that I need, I'll oh, say that that one's done, um, the base coats I need and uh, normally I would, in some, you know, in some cases um, the silver needs to go on there or in, like the, I'd do the grey first before doing the rest of it but because the grey is the painter's touch stuff it doesn't like being sprayed on top of so I'm doing it the other way around, it needs more masking but yeah. Um, Interestingly, I thought these were the same colour as the foot shells. They're not. They're the dove light grey, which means that one is as well. Now this is the stone. It looks darker on the screen than it does in real life. Um, so I'm not entirely convinced it's the right colour. Uh, I'm just put them next to each other. No, it's not really going to show very well. But they are they are slightly different colours. I think this needs to be darker. It's almost like the primer grey, but I don't want to just use primer grey. So I think we'll go with this and see how, how, see how it looks. Um, but yeah, wait for this to dry. So that one's done. That one's done. So they're done. As it's that. So they're painted, they're ready. These just need additional colours putting on once they're, once they're dry. And I've got to carry on sanding everything else. So crack on with it. Right, I've sanded the legs and I've given them another blast of putty. Um, there's bits like join line here you sorting out. And on here you can still see a bit of the ribbing of the of the, uh, the printing. Uh, but for the most part they're okay. So it's mainly just around here and a bit on this bit and that really. Um, there's a Bit visible there. Uh, there's a bit of line. <laughs> Sorry, security light. Um, there's a bit of line visible here, um, but I'm not worried because there's going to be a greebly there. Likewise, I haven't bothered doing any of that. Cause, again, there's a greebly there. I don't want to add layers of paint. Um, so yeah, the next. There we go. Put that back on. Uh, so yeah, the next thing to do really is just let it dry. I'll spray both sides so they're leaning up against this. Yes, I know they're going to match there at the top, um, but I can work with that. And um, yeah, four more things left to sand the two battery boxes and the two feet. And we can get these painted. I'm still not sure about the grey. I think I need a darker grey. I'm happy with the dove grey for this leg. I'm not sure about the grey for this leg. And I'm going to go in now because the security light is not staying on long enough. Right, that's all the leg greeblies done. Um, right, I say all the leg greeblies. I haven't done the 
the hydraulic pipes, are, the hydraulic struts that are on the side that attach to the, the bottom of the leg. So apart from that, they're done. Um, I'm quite happy the way they came out overall. Um, weathering, cover that up, and a couple of bits there will cover that up. I'm not sure if these are silver or not. I can't quite work out. So I might just paint some silver on there, or at least on the, the, the screw holes. Um, yeah, I think weathering and detail work will certainly make it seem less blocky. Um, yeah, overall, I'm pleased with that. Uh, I finished sanding the legs. Oh yeah, I said that earlier, didn't I? I sanded the legs there. They're dry, they're going to get re-sanded and then hopefully primed. And then it's the feet and batch boxes. But yeah, I'm pleased with these. Right, I sanded that leg down again and I'm happy with that. That's smoothish. Um, the layer lines are more or less gone. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with that. So that's... Oh, hang on, let's give that a quick sand. Um, just give that a quick sand and then that's ready for priming and then I'll work on that one again. I feel like I'm making some progress now. One side primed. Right, I sanded that foot down. Yeah, and for the most part it's okay. There's a bit here and there that needs sorting out. Um, that seems okay. But for the most part it's okay, so I'm going to give it another... Right, there as well. I'm going to give it another coat of spray putty just to even it out. And then I can get on with sanding that one while this one's drying. Give this another very light sand and then it should be good to prime it. So yeah, that'll be the next one. And this is actually relatively easy to sand. Um, there's a lot of it's hidden, so all in there is hidden, so I don't need to worry about getting it completely smooth. All that's completely hidden by a battery box, so as long as it's not um, bumpy, you know, I don't need to worry about getting rid of the panel line because there's a great big battery box there. Um, so yeah, as long as the join lines are gone here, which is visible, then it should be okay. So yeah, I'm going to give it another spray. And then, uh, as I said, I'll work on that one. And both sides of the legs are now primed. Because I've got the nice warmish weather back, so I can work faster. Right, those are ready to be painted. Um, well, in the case of this one, I'm half tempted to say that is the colour. It's kind of like the right grey, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carry on using that because it matches everything else. And then that is that one. So, um, yeah, they're ready for paint. That's ready for sand. And the other foot shell is currently drying after another spray of spray putty. And then uh, that one will get another spray of putty, I imagine. Other foot shell gets dried off, uh, sanded off, and then that's ready for prime. Motoring along nicely now. Right, start painting the legs. So I've done the silver with the spray of black to give me that kind of gunmetal effect. Uh, not quite as worse as it normally does, but it's uh, it's good enough. So these are the gunmetal. They're the gunmetal, as are they. There, those two bits, and then on here it's just those bits. Uh, on this leg, these bits are orange, so that we I did just realise that be masked off, and they'll be painted orange. Um, I've also done the black bits here and here on both, hence why they're masked off. And um, I was having another look, and this section here, the ankle, is the same colour, I think, as the feet. Um, so having a mess around with the shark grey, uh, which one was it, it's this one. So, let me see there's a bit of silver on there now, but that's the shot. That's the shark grey, it, it kind of has a, a shine to it, which sort of fits what happens on stage. In some places it's quite dark, and other places it's quite shiny. So I'm thinking that might be the way to go, just a very light coat. Um, same for the legs. If not, I'll just do like a dark, dark aluminium, dark metal. 
So I'm going to let that all dry. Then these will get masked, well, orange, but masked off. Those can get painted, that can get masked off, and then it's the leg. Um, the other foot has been primed, that just needs its initial sand and respray, and then that can get primed, and then those can be painted, and then it's the battery boxes. Um, so, yeah, get in there. Right, so this is the stage mat at the moment. The attached greaves to the feet have been painted, so that one's been painted, and those and those front of there and the back and I painted that around there uh, the same aluminium it appears to be the aluminium colour uh, I've done the same one there you'll notice I haven't painted this bit yet because I'm not entirely sure what colour it is it's darker than this and it, this itself seems to be quite dark um, using that I'm half tempted to say that that is that colour but in which case I don't know what colour to do that I must admit, the overspray at the moment makes it look quite good. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have a think about that. Um, and that's stopping me from painting the rest at the moment. Obviously, it needs to dry. Um, the legs are similar to the orange ring, and the battery boxes have had their first sand and recoat of spray putty. So they just need to sand it down again, and then I think they're ready for their primer. And yeah, and then I'm ready to paint these. I don't think there's any other colours on here apart from maybe a bit of dark black around there. I might just hand paint that and same one there's a bit of black and I'll hand paint that. Um yeah everything else is just one colour on both those. So yeah, get in there. And then we can start looking at this bit and then the whole leg. Right, so a bit of a quick update. I've changed that to white. Um, just having a look at the pictures, they look white, and I just realise it's pooling a bit there. Um, these are black, and that bit's orange, so I'm going to paint that orange. Uh, the rest of the body of the foot shell still needs painting, uh, but now I've got to let that dry before I can do that, so that'll probably be a tomorrow job. Over here, painted the orange ring and unfortunately I've had a bit of bleed through uh, so I'm going to have to fix that but I've saying that it doesn't matter too much there because that needs to be painted but I need to scrape that bit away and I might be able to get away scraping that bit but I've also used this um, what was it called shark grey I must admit I quite like the colour it's a, it's a metallic colour, but it's nice and shiny. Um, it has that kind of dual colour effect in real life. Almost oily. It's like shark skin. Makes sense. Um, so I've done the bottom of the ankle, and that's the colour I tend to do the feet foot shells with as well. Yeah, that's the intention. Um, we'll see. I might end up changing them to look more like sort of like the aluminium metal effect that I've got. Um, I think once that's dry, so again this is going to be a tomorrow job now because I need to let this cure, is mask all that off, mask all these bits off, um, tidy up this masking so I can get to these bits and then spray the body of the, of the leg, spray the body of the foot shells, they just need their secondary sanding and then they can be primed and then they can get sprayed as well and I think they're going to be the same colour as that I think so with that with a very slightly green right that's the one leg sprayed um, that's one coat of that and I'll be honest I think it needs to be a little darker I think it needs to be a little darker Maybe I can weather it to be darker. Hmm. Okay, I'll see how it dries. Yeah, I'll see how it dries. And that's the other leg done. I'm happier with that colour, although that one is darkening off. 
doesn't look like it on screen, but it is dark enough. Um, yeah, I'm happy with those. So just even to dry now, um, there is a bit of paint run on the back side. Luckily, it'd be covered up by the hub. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm happy with that. Right, I sprayed one of the feet, and I'm quite pleased with that colour. I picked a new colour up from Halfords earlier on, and it's uh, that one. I decided not to do the uh, sharp grey. As much as I like the colour, I think this, admittedly it's still wet so it looks shiny. Um, it kind of has that effect that I think the live action chopper has. If you get the light in the right place it looks lighter. Uh, but I don't know how much of that moves down to the fact it's still wet. Um, and yeah, a little slight paint run. It's annoying. That's on the front. Um, See, so yeah, I'm going to mask up the other one and give that a spray. And then once they're dry, I'm going to respray those to be the same colour. Uh, as much as I like that sharp grey, I think this is probably the better colour. Right, and that's the other one done. Uh, apparently, it's now getting too dark. It's only 20 past nine. Um, security lights come on. So I think that's my cue to give up for the night. But I'm pleased with those. I'm pleased with that one. Still not sure about that one. Uh, so it's just the battery boxes left to resand, prime, and paint. And I bought a new colour for that as well, which I'll show you uh, when I come to them. Right, so the masking tape's removed, and overall, I'm pleased with that. Um, pro tip do not buy Halford's automotive masking tape, it's useless. Um, I've got so many areas where there's bleed through or just peeled away. But other than that, it's fine. Um, so it's a bit tidying up on the black here, and I still need to tidy up the silver there. And the grey is growing on me. In the house, in the shade, it looks darker, which sort of fits the screen you, the screen picture. Those. Um, so the feet, the colour is brilliant. The downside to the colour is, it's still showing the the marks where the join lines are. Um, not much I can do about that now. Not much I am going to do about that. Um, so it needs to pick the orange there. But again, with the masking tape, it's even though that cured overnight, well, 24 hours, that had still marked it. Um, I say, not much I can do about it, not much I'm going to do about it, weathering will cover a lot of it up. I need to paint those silver again, I just couldn't be bothered to mask them, um, so I hand paint those silver. And so yeah, we hand painted that and that effectively, oh, and uh, the detail colours on there, then I've got to cover that. Right. These are the little hydraulic struts that need to go on the legs, and I've already positioned them and glued them. But they kind of go on like that, uh, up a bit. They go on like that, so they need to be painted silver. So, first thing we need to do is undercoat them black. Yeah, I could just use grey primer. Um, I'm not even going to bother spray putting them, I'm just going to paint them black, paint them silver. And allow the wet and allow the lines through to look like weathering because it'd be corroded in all sorts. Um, before I stick them down, though, I will have to do the tidying up around here and here. It's easy enough. Yeah. Um, so I've got the hose here. I've cut the end off the old hose with the magnet in. Stuck that down. I'll cut the other end off and stick that down once I'm happy with the length. So this is a lot longer than the old one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend it to give myself a lot more flexible room. Bend it like this. Yeah, bend it like that, yeah. And then um, that'll be ready. So uh, the only other thing I haven't done are the hoses on the back of the foot shells, but to be honest, I'll probably come back to those later uh, just because I haven't got time and I need to decide what size they're going to be. I know Terry's used the same size ones that come on R2. And I, they look a little too big to me, but they could be the right size. Um, I do have those hoses spare. So I might end up using those. And then the other only thing to do is I need to get around sanding those. 
and the colour I'm going to paint for battery boxes is that. Right, finally got these primed. Well, I can't do the, other, the underside, but they're primed. They're painted. That's painted. You see the magnet on the other end. Don't need to worry about painting it because about that much is hidden by the um, socket on the on the leg. So I think I think these are white. I think they're white. And then I'll do the white, mask it off, and then yeah, mask it off and do the the the, the other colour. Uh, but first, I'm going to flip it over and prime that side. Right, silver's now. I'll let that dry, and I can mask it off, and then I can do the bluey green colour, which will probably end up being more blue than green. Right, while I'm waiting for the silver to dry, I've just stuck those on. And they look alright. Done one on one side, and I quite like the colour. Um, the masking tape is still horrible. Don't know why I just didn't buy my normal browns, but oh well. Done it now. So anyway, yeah, I'll let that side dry, spin it over, paint the other side. And then um, I need to mask that. Uh, Cut that and spray that, and that's the colour I'm using. So it looks, it looks quite good. I like that one. Right, so I've been looking again, and as much as I love this colour, it's actually that colour. So I can change the colour to that. So I think I'm done. There's touch at work and there's detail painting he's doing, but I think I'm done. Wow. Okay. Um, guess I'll start putting the droid back together. Right. That's the legs back together. By the batch boxes because they're still drying, which reminds me I should uh, move those off there. Right, so they're still drying, and then they can go on. Uh, for the most part, they went together really nicely. Um, this one getting the ankle bolt back through is a bit of a pain. It involved a mallet and something blunt to knock it through, but it's in. The pipe's in, but it needs chopping probably about there, and then pulling that curl a bit tighter. I'm probably at the limit of that curve already, uh, just its natural curve, so I'm going to have to train it and I'll probably have to respray it because the paint's cracking off, which doesn't surprise me. Um, th that was a bit of a tight fit, I had to sand the inside of here and the inside edge of that, and then that kind of just about fit in with a bit of, a bit of force. Um, and I was expecting this, this is the second leg I did, I was expecting this one to be a pain because that one was. That slid right in, the ankle bolt, and those two things just slid right in and everything was fine. So, there you go. So those are the legs back together. And I guess the next step is to put the body back together. Um, okay then, we're all hooked up. The legs are back on. We have power to the dome from the slip ring. Uh, Ignore the fact those two lights aren't working. I think it's a code issue. But I think we're ready for a driving test. So we've even got the red LEDs there. We've even got the red LEDs there. I haven't put the back on just in case I need to access the power straight away. So just to double check. We have noises. Right, yeah. Try and do this one handed. Right. Let's try the dome. Okay. No scrapes and scratches. Let's try driving carefully.
<laughs> Sorry, I have a massive grin on my face right now. <laughs> there we go, that's better. So, have we got noises? And we have dome. Right, we don't have any survey movements at the moment. And of course I'm on the slope so I've got to be careful, I've got to have him actually going forward slightly to put the brake on. And... It's kind of got a wobble on it. Not looking bad, is it? Whoa! So I think something broke there when it shot forward. Centre pin here, I might have to print a new one to put it in. Um, I'll check that in a minute. Let's, uh, let's try driving. Because yeah, it's going to crack, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, something's definitely snapped or snapping there. We have to reprint that. Uh, shouldn't take long to sort out, but it's just. At least it did it now rather than uh, at DBUK. But other than that, it's looking good. <laughs> it's looking really good. Just kind of wish I got the servos working. Right, okay, I'm going to leave it there. Um, I think, really, I was hoping for a bit more test, but as in, I've got to reprint a bit. Um, I think I'll be leaving it there. So, next time you see this, he will be at DBUK driving around annoying people. Actually that grey's not too bad. Maybe it could be a little darker, but it's not too bad. But yeah, maybe at DB UK next time you see him. So just a quick date on what happened with that foot. Um, taking the foot apart and the majority of it seems fine. But as you can see here, that's at an angle. So where it hit my foot when it launched forward, it's crashed into and smashed through here so luckily that bit's okay all that's okay uh, I just need to reprint this and paint it and everything by Friday so a day a day in an evening um, so I'm going to print it with more walls and thicker infill so it's a little stronger um, yeah it's okay I just got to reprint it and repaint it it shouldn't take too long especially in this heat it would be quite quick to dry and then uh, hopefully I'll be back rolling for Friday hopefully it's annoying test run and it breaks but at least it broke now rather than at DB UK and now I'm signing off thank you very much for watching I'll catch you on the next episode bye for now <laughs>